Hello everyone, Pantoof here today for a new video in which we are going to discuss the top 5 easiest tanks to grind, I mean tier 10. But you have to keep in mind one thing concerning this, it's only my opinion, it can change and I think a lot of people are going to disagree with me on what I'm about to say. Probably not on all of them, but maybe two or three of them. It's only how I felt because uh, I'm pretty experienced in this game concerning grinding lines. I know approximately because I have pretty much every single tier 10 in this game, so I know which tanks you should struggle with if you're a new player and which tanks you should go for. I mean the easiest tanks to green. So here are my criterias. It's really simple. It's based on mainly two things. The power of the tank when it's facing uh, opponents of the same tier, therefore is the tank a good tank overall for its tier or not? And also, is the tank horrible or not when it's stuck? How, how the tanks are going to react when you don't have them fully upgraded? So let's not lose too much time and jump directly into it. Uh, it's not um, it's not in the list. I'm gonna go for for pretty much every single tech tree. And when I uh, when I know what kind of tanks I want to discuss about, uh, I'm just gonna discuss. So the first one here that we are gonna talk about is the T110E5 because if you look closely at the line, you see that there is a couple of tanks that are pretty good because Wargaming kept buffing again and again and again the line. First, starting, I'm gonna start at the tier five because uh, before I mean every single tank is the same thank you 5.5 update so we're going to discuss about it mainly uh, starting at the tier 5 so the tier 5 T1 Heavy as you can see I enriched it of course I enriched it this tank is completely broken you have one of the best armor and even if you don't have the last gun or the last equipment and stuff your tank is extremely strong at the front it's the same for the M6 and the T29 and the T32 and maybe the only one that you're going to struggle a little bit with here is the M103, which is not the greatest tank. But let's face it, if only one tank out of all the branch sucks, clearly it's a good branch. And it's going to lead you to the T1025 that since it got its cupola removed is an extremely effective tank on the battlefield. Quite versatile that you can use both uh, on heavy side or medium side, it all depends on your playstyle. But yeah, clearly this one is uh, the line I wanted to start with. The T1025 is an easy line to grind and clearly I recommend it to pretty much everybody because the only thing you need to do with all these tanks here is all down as long as you're all down you're gonna do a good game except of course if you're being pushed or if you do mistakes like uh, going alone on the side or, or something like this but it all depends on you and not your team that's why to me this is a great line to green the t125 now uh, we are going to talk a little bit more about the germans we are going to talk about one line especially because all of them are quite hardcore i, I truly think the german tech tree is uh not one of the hardest, but clearly one that requires some skill because mainly except for two or three tanks really they do have some high skilled level requirement tank. So uh, the branch I wanted to talk about is the E100. Same, if we start at the at the tier five, the tier five sucks. Panzer 4G. I mean, no, it's it doesn't suck, but it's quite average. But when it becomes really interesting is when you start with the tier 6. As you all know the VK3601H received the buff same as the T1 Heavy this one is completely broken at tier 6. Tiger 1 exactly the same you have an amazing gun, uh, good mobility and an amazing armor and the Tiger 2 that received the buff as well. Really the whole branch the three tanks here you're gonna love them and you're never gonna be upset about them because clearly with this one you're gonna bounce you have an amazing gun an amazing penetration I mean, I enriched all of them. It should tell you that I really love the branch. And of course, the 75 uh, that comes right after, which is one of the best tier 9s, in my opinion, concerning heavy tanks, because you have pretty much everything. These tanks have everything they need. They have a good gun, good mobility, and good armor. And of course, it leads you to the 100. Okay, the 100 with the first gun sucks a little bit, but once you manage to uh, to get the, the last one, the last gun, clearly, it's a really, really cool tank tank to drive on the battlefield as long as you know how to angle. So clearly the whole branch of the E100 is also one of the easiest and you should definitely give it a try when you got the chance to. Now uh, let's talk about the Russians because of course it's impossible to talk about the 
easiest lines to grind without talking about the Russians, which are clearly in this game the easiest line to grind thanks to, thanks to Wargaming nationality because Wargaming is a Russian company. And of course, as Russians, they need to make Russian tanks broken. So uh, we're going to talk about two main things here. The first one I want to talk about is the Object 268 line. Because the whole branch uh, is great mainly for one thing, the gun. You start at the SU-85, once you unlock all the guns, you are gonna be, I mean, you're gonna penetrate everything, you're not gonna bounce, so it's not gonna be frustrating. With this one, you just need to unlock the gun and your uh, your gameplay is gonna do the rest. You, you have an amazing alpha damage and it's quite a fun branch to play, so even if you do... If, even if you do some defeats, you don't care because you're going to be able to manage maybe a 900 with HC shells or a 640 alpha damage when you come to the tier 7, tier 8, tier 9 and tier 10. Clearly, even if you can struggle a little bit with the SU-85, as soon as you hit the SU-100, it's going to be one of the funniest line to green. To me, it's the first, the best line to green if you really want to have fun, thanks to the big guns they are carrying. And also the penetration. When you really grind to a little bit higher tiers, I can start with the SU-152, because clearly you have the choice. You have the choice. I would rather go for the tier 6 gun because it's a 152. But you always have a good penetration. 250 with gold shells on the the SU-100, with the ISU-152 you can reach up when you have the good gun to uh, 329 with the APCRs which is uh, really really great. The main problem with this branch is the fact that you need to spend a lot of XP in order to get your the guns. But when you have the guns, oh boy is it a funny line to green. Of course, uh, even if you don't have the last gun, and that's why these tanks are in this list, even if you don't have the last gun, you can still do great things, because in order to unlock the SU-152, if you can climb up to this gun right there, uh, it's gonna be easy for you after, because you're gonna have an amazing uh, damage per minute, 3.7k alpha damage uh, no, DPM, sorry, even if you don't have the last gun. And that's what I like about the 268. It combines both I mean the branch, it combined both a really great gun and the ability of making the tank a good one even if it's stuck. So that's why it's in this list. After uh, something completely different but still Russian, the T62A and Object 140 because both are linked to the T54 if you take the light tanks. I know a lot of people are asking me DMs, should I go uh, to, I want to go for the T62A for example, and I don't know if I should go for the T3485 and green the mediums, or go for the MT25 and green the light tanks. And to this I'll answer, go for the light tanks if you're skilled, and if you're not really skilled, maybe the mediums are going to be for you, but either way, both are good. The The only main difference between the light tanks here and the mediums is that the T-54 lightweight is clearly a better tank than the T-44. But after, for MT-25, T-34, 85, they don't have the same role in the battlefield, but they are still, both of them, really effective. And same for the LTTB and the T-43. So yeah, clearly, it's a really enjoyable uh, line, and it's one of the few lines where not a single tank is bad. Really, if you if you go, T26 is a good tank at tier 1, BT2 is a good tank at tier 2, BT7 is a good tank at tier 3, A20 is a good tank at tier 4, etc, etc, all to the top to the Object 140 and the T62A. The main difference maybe between the light tanks and the mediums is the fact that light tanks, uh, you're gonna be more punished for your mistakes, maybe not really for the LTTB, but that's an exception to the rule. And uh, yeah, you're, you're probably gonna be more comfortable with mediums if you are a newbie or average player. But overall, the line is great. Even if the tanks are stuck, they can still do good things on the battlefield. And when they are fully upgraded, these are among the best tanks of their tier. Especially the T-54, uh, which is to me my, my lovely tier 9, one of the best tier 9s in my opinion. That can just destroy pretty much everything on the battlefield it's gonna, it's gonna encounter. And uh, yeah, the main reason they are here is that they are both good, stuck and full. But also because they are quite versatile in their role on the battlefield. You can do pretty much everything. You can do for uh, all down, side scrap, flanking. That's overall a great line, and that's why it's in this top. And now for the uh, last one, the last one, still Russian, still Russian. We have a lot of Russian tanks here. But of course, I can't do this top without talking about the IS-7 line. 
I know it's gonna be controversial because most of the players are gonna say, yeah, IS-7 sucks, and uh, no, I don't think IS-7 sucks. It has its weakness, but you need to counter them in order to be good. But clearly, this branch deserves its uh, its place in this top. Why? Because starting, I already told you, from T26 to the A20, it's a good line. And then you have the KV-1. The KV-1 is one of the strongest tier 5 tanks. Even if you're not full, you're gonna bounce a lot of shells, which is nice. We also have the KV-1S, which is quite versatile and has a huge, and really a huge gun that can make... Uh, a lot of damage, not gonna lie. And after you go for the IS that got buffed, that is really today an amazing tank. You also have the IS-3, IS-8, they all have the same playstyle. Maybe the, the only problem of this line here, and it's not really a problem, it's, uh, it's all about being able to gather some information concerning the tanks. From the KV-1 to the IS-3, yes, you need to uh, play it like a heavy tank. It's really important because you can sustain on the battlefield like this and they are quite versatile. You can take a, n a numerous number of rolls, you can either hold down or side scrap and even using the mobility to be able to circle your targets or even play on the medium side. Really, they are quite versatile, but as soon as you eat the IS-8, everything is gonna change because clearly even if the IS-8 is meant to be a heavy tank its playstyle is close to a medium tank because uh, you're gonna have a great mobility and no armor not even on the turret and you're gonna encounter a lot of tier 10s because you're a tier 9 and of course the matchmaking is gonna make you play against tier 10 so uh, yeah clearly the main problem here is that with the IS-8 you don't want to play it like a heavy tank. With the IS-8, if you play it on the medium tank, like a medium tank, on the medium side, it should be fine for you. That's all. After, when you reach the IS-7, you can still uh, take back the gameplay you had with the IS-3. But yeah, overall, it's great. And it's great because you're gonna unlock the gun of the tanks sooner than expected. For example, for the KV-1, you have this gun, which is gonna be good at tier 5, but also good at tier 6. So when you reach the KV, uh, the KV-1S, you still have this gun here, but you uh, you can unlock one better gun, but at least you're not... You know, it's not that kind of tank that is completely useless because it's stock. Here, even if the tank is stock, it can be quite strong on mobility, armor, and also uh, alpha damage. So yeah, that's why, to me, the i7 had to be in this list. So yeah, uh, this, this is the top 5 easiest grind in my opinion, of course. Uh, I know some of you might disagree with what I just said, but uh, yeah, th that's my feeling. Uh, that's my experience with the game, etc. And that's how I see tech trees. So uh, tell me in the comments what you think about this list. What would you add? What would you remove uh, if you totally agree or not? I'm interested in that. And thank you all for watching. And I really hope it's going to help some newbies to know what tanks they should go for at first. Because clearly, these five tanks are the easiest to learn how to play uh, the game, how to play the game and the different mechanisms, especially especially T62 and 144, the mediums, and the IS-7 for heavies. Thank you all for watching and see you soon.